Hello and welcome to the SAM Projects 2013 video series. This is the Word 3 video. So let's log in to the SAM site and obtain our start file for Word 3 and our instructions. First of all, our instruction file. Enable editing here on our instruction file and I can see that we are working with tables and graphics in this chart which is nice. Coming back to our website, we'll get the start file. Again, enable editing so that I can navigate through this file in a normal way. And I'm also going to navigate from the website the uh, support file. I'll do a save as, save it to my desktop. So I'll have it there for later. All right. So I have my instructions and I have my start file. Now if I look at my start file I will see that the footer has this file created specifically for and then your name there and I want to do a file save as to change the extension I'm going to put it on the desktop of my computer change the extension from underscore one to an underscore two leaving everything else the same. Alright so let's get started with this project. Number one, change the document margins to moderate and apply the frame theme. So going back to our document, the page layout tab is where we would see our margins. And we have a list of different margins here and we want to use the moderate margin. We also want to change the theme, which is in the design tab. And we're using the theme of frame, which is uh, over here in the third row down five columns. Step two, move the insertion point before the word express in the headline paragraph, Express Yourself Language Institute, and then insert the image file, the support file that we just downloaded from the SAM website. So put the cursor before the word express here in the uh, header paragraph, and then insert the picture from the desktop or wherever you saved it at. And there it is. I saved it from the start page. Now that's a very large image there. I suspect we're going to make that smaller and sure enough we do that here on the next step. Step three, resize the image so it's only one half an inch tall and change the text wrap format to be through. So first of all we're going to change this to be one half an inch and I can just do that by when selecting the image I get the context format menu. I can just click on this and drop it down to 0.5 I also could type that value in directly there. And then I want to do the uh, formatting, uh, the layout here to be the through option, which I believe is this third one here on the first row through. And now the text uh, flows not behind it, but flows naturally with the text as if the image wasn't there, which is a good look. Recolor the image, applying the gold accent to color uh, accent color to light. Third column, third row in the recolor section. So they're telling us exactly where this is at. It's in the, uh, where is the recolor? The recolor is in our, where is the recolor? Select the icon, and in the Format tab that pops up in a context, we have uh, the options including the uh, color, which gives a recolor option. And the recolor option down three over three is the gold accent color to light option. So we apply that, and our image takes on that uh, expression color. Step number five change the font size of the headline paragraph express yourself language institute to be 28 point and center align the text the image should remain left aligned so this headline paragraph center uh, express yourself language institute should have uh, 28 point now i have an option here if a cursor goes a little bit further into this white space i'm getting I'm including the graphic with it. If I move the cursor back, I still have the left mouse button pressed. I can choose not to get the graphic. I don't think it'll make a difference either way because uh, the graphic is not going to be affected by the font size. 
but there is just that uh, you'll notice that sometimes if you have bullets in your text and you want to change the font of the bullet that's actually how you highlight the bullet is by uh, highlighting the text and getting the thing at the end of the bullet as well the whole paragraph anyways 28 point sorry and what am I doing center aligning the text so with this text cursor inside the paragraph and click center align and notice that the image does stay on the left hand margin so all's well with the world there step six apply the grid table for accent one style to the table that is express yourself language institute through the years and then format the table using the auto fit window so here is a table and as I put the cursor over here, you'll notice in the upper left-hand corner, there is this box with a north-south-east-west-looking shape inside of it. And if I click on that north-south-east-west, it will select the entire table. So I want to do that. I want to select the entire table, uh, and then I want to apply in the context ribbon up here. In the design view, I can choose the uh, grid table for accent one style. So in my styles here, uh, these are my options and the fourth one down is grid table four and over one is grid table four accent one and that's what we're looking for we also then want to take this table and resize it right click and say uh, um, what is it we want to do we want to auto fit so to do the auto fit I'm not seeing it here I need to select the entire table again so again I'll select the entire table and then I can right click and say auto fit. The auto fit option only appears when the entire table is selected. And I want to auto fit to the window, which is not auto fit to contents and not auto fit to the column width, but auto fit to window and it looks like that. The next step we are ready for is step seven. Merge the three cells in the first row of the table and then center align the text in the merged cells. So here's the first, here's a cell, here's a cell, here's a cell. I want to highlight all three of those cells and then merge those. I can right click and merge. And then I want to center align. So I have it selected and come up to the center align in the home tab and I can have that title be centered there. Step eight. Insert a new row in the table immediately after the row starting with today, and then enter the data shown. So immediately after, immediately above, you need to be careful what I'm saying there, immediately above the row today. So here's the row today, and I want to go right here above it. And notice as I just put my cursor between these rows that I have this little plus icon uh, that shows up, and clicking on that plus icon creates a row in that specific location. And the text for this is there in Table 1, it's 2013, it's Cleveland, C-L-E-V-E, and it's Portuguese, P-O-R-T-U-G-U-E-S-E, -E. and we're good. Step number 9, on page 2, move the insertion point to the blank line after the paragraph that begins the main driver and ends interest in those industries. So put the cursor after that paragraph and then insert a table two columns by five rows. And this is the text we're going to put into it. So on page two, the main driver and those industries, in those industries, so there's where we put the cursor after the paragraph. And then we insert a table. We'll do this on the insert tab. In the table drop down, we can just move to whatever size table we want. And I want two across and five down. That gives me uh, two columns and five rows. And I have my table there that will hold those 10 pieces of information. Now I need to type in the information from the table, industry, student interest, energy, 20%, hospitality, travel, and so on. So I'll just type this in. Industry is the header there, and interest is the header for that column. Energy at 20%. Hospitality. Oops, hospitality, travel at 25%, finance at 25%, and other at 30%. Okay, so I have that data typed in from table two there, hospitality, travel, finance, other. Okay, so I typed all that in correctly. Step 10, we're going to format this table. We're going to apply the uh, grid table five accent one style using the, and then uh, format the table using auto fit to contents. So first of all, let's get the style. 
in my list of styles, I want style 5. I want this one here, grid dark 5. And then I want to do grid dark 5, accent 1. So that is that uh, style. And then I want to format the table using auto fit contents. So again, with the entire table selected, I can right click and have an auto fit. And this time I'm choosing auto fit to contents. And that'll make the rows and the columns just wide enough for the text to be displayed. And you can see that this isn't, uh, doesn't fill the page width at all. It's even less than half a page. Center align the text in column two and then center the entire table on the page. So I want to select column two and notice as I put my cursor at the top of the page, just above the column, I get a little, the icon becomes an arrow pointing down. If I click at that point, I'm selecting the entire second column and I can center the text in the second column, then select the entire table and select center and I'm centering the entire table in the context of the page, left and right margins. Insert a rounded rectangle shape in the blank line above the paragraph in response to, and it's just a third of an inch high, and it's six and a half and uh, six and three quarters inches wide. So it's about the width of the page, but just a you know not very high at all. A rounded rectangle shape above the paragraph in response to. So here's the text in response to. So right there is where we're wanting to insert our rounded rectangle shape. Insert shapes, and in the shapes option. One of the recently used up here a common is probably rounded rectangle. If not, you could go into the rectangles area and you could find rounded rectangle in that area. Right? And it's the second one in that area. But it's the same thing. It's very commonly used. I'll just grab this one here. And I'm going to go ahead and initially draw the shape. It's going to look something like that, not exactly. And then I'm going to manually resize it to be 3 inches tall and 6.75 in width. Type the text R responses into the shape you just entered. Left align the text, apply bold formatting, and change the font color to the white background one, the first row in the first column of the themes color palette. So R response becomes the text here. If you right click on it, you can say add text. Our response, O N S E, yes. And then we uh, do a left align. And we, what else do we do here? We do bold formatting. And we apply the font color. Now that font looks white, but if I actually pull on the font color list, I don't see anything's highlighted. It's actually, it's, it's automatic is what's selected. It's happened to be showing up white, but I wanna be clear with this. So I'm gonna select this white background one. And I know if I go back and re-click on it, notice that the white first row, first column, rect, uh, square has that little outline shape around it. So I definitely have, am applying that uh, color white background one to uh, the text inside that shape right now, which is what I want to do there. Step 14. Select the heading beginning and intermediate Arabic for fall 2015 and add a left tab stop at four inches. Then move the insertion point in front of fall 2015 and press the tab so it moves over to the right. So here's the text, select the text, and then with the text selected, I want to have a left tab stop at the four and a half inch position. Now the way that we do our, uh, make sure that's right, four and a half, no, the four inch, at the four inch position. In this upper left hand corner, you'll see that there are different shapes here, and left tab is what's selected, it looks like an L. If you actually click through these, there are different types of tab options, and each of those has a little different functionality. But I, you can make sure you have the left uh, oops, I don't want center tab. There we go. So that's the left tab. That's what I want to have. And now when I click in this ribbon, I'm going to press and hold the mouse. Uh, I'm adding a left tab. It's kind of hard to see because it's behind the, uh, the cursor there. But I'm adding a left tab stop. And I want to put it right there on the four. And then put the cursor in front of the word fall and press tab. And it now tabs to that left tab stop that I just added. These tabs are actually pretty powerful. And if you, you might want to play around with some of the options there, including uh, a center tab if you want to have text centered. And there's even one, a right tab, if you want things to have a rough right. And then this one's really cool, a decimal tab. If you're using numbers and you want to line things up at the decimal, the decimal tab is a very cool and easy way to do that. and looks very professional. And we'll switch back to the left tab. Okay. 
step 15. In the blank line after the paragraph, um, additional upper level Korean that ends with assessing or assessed the demand, you're to insert an online picture by searching office.com for the Japanese language clip art shown in figure one. So there is, this is, uh, this clip art is in the office.com site. So let's do that. The paragraph, the blank line after additional upper level Korean assessed the demand. So additional upper level Korean assessed the demand. So there's the line after it, and it's actually centered already. And I'm going to insert an image, not from the disk, right? Not from the hard drive, but from online pictures. So I select online pictures and this window pulls up and I want to search office.com and I'm searching for uh, Japanese languages, languages. And hopefully the image shows up. Ah, there it is. It does show up. So I'll click the image and say insert. And there the image is placed into my document where the cursor was. If the image doesn't exist, you can select an alternative image. We didn't need to select an alternative because we found the image. Step 16, resize the clip art so it's 75% of its original size and then recolor using that gold accent color to light, uh, which is third column, third row in the recolor. So first of all, make it 75% of its normal size. So select the image and then in the context menu, I can come over to this size option. Now 75% is not an option that's on the immediate window, I have to go down a little, I have to pull up the dialog box. And when I pull up the dialog box, I can specify the ratio this way. I can manually scroll down to 75 or I can type 75 in uh, to the text box. So my image is a little bit smaller, it's 75% of its original size. And then with the image selected, in the format tab, I have the color recolor option, or I have the recolor option here. And on recolor, three over, three down is gold accent color light two accent color to light. Check the spelling and grammar. Should find at least one spelling error. So I'm going to do the review spelling and grammar. It finds beginning. I'll change it. And then we get the notification that spelling and grammar is complete. Good to go. So looking at the document, I see that header and that table and I see that our response and the fall and the color, that looks an awful lot like my document, right? This looks a little bit different than the picture shown, but I think it's correct. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to close it, and then I'm going to go to the website and I'm going to upload the work I just did. And we'll see how we did. We got our three check marks. After our three check marks, we wanna to go to the reports. We wanna find word three in our reports. There's word three, pull it up, and we see that we got 100 out of 100. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day.